and you got offended. So now you are discouraged because of just one voice na ginamit ng jablo. It's not true. Amen. We are anointed already. First John 2.27 says, The anointing that is in you will teach you everything. Amen. You are anointed already. Amen. Amen. But the anointing that you receive from Him, praise God, abides in you and you have no need that anyone should teach you. You are anointed. Amen. Keep doing what you're doing. Never listen to those negative voices. So you will not be offended. You will not be offended. It's a spirit. Spirit of offense. They always try to offend us. To offend us. But have always a positive spirit. Amen. Don't believe those, those negative comments that they give you. And we Christians, we don't give negative comments also. To your brothers or sisters, don't discourage your brother or your sister. Don't hurt their feelings. Yung iba, hindi na umatin kasi na-offend daw, na-offend. They were hurt, so their spiritual career was hampered. Ginagamit na ng Panginoon ngayon, wala na siya. Na-offend. The valley of hurt. Naglalakad siya, napunta siya sa valley of hurt. Valley of hurt, na-offend ako. <laughs> Ayaw ko na dyan sa computer. Offend ako eh. They offended me. Don't call me, okay? Don't call me. I'm offended. I don't want to attend church anymore. Pag ba't natlong taong ka na sa church, ay backslide ka pa? Hello, anong klaseng tuhod meron ka? What kind of knees do you have? Stumble ka pa, three years ka na. Diba sa atin, 5 years, 10 years na, na-offend pa. Hello, hindi ka ba nag-grow? Ang na-offend, babies. Amen. Mature Christians don't get offended. They forgive and they understand that those people who are hurting Him, they don't mean anything sometimes. Amen. But you shouldn't be offended. Madi-distract ang iyong spiritual growth, ang iyong spiritual career. You are just passing through the valley of hurt. Kasama po yan sa buhay kristyano. It's included. Why? Christians are not perfect. They may tell you something that is not, you know, pleasant to your ear. But all these valleys, we will have to go through all of them. Amen. All of them. Before we stop this church, we, we've suffered so many hard. Marami po nakasakit ang feelings namin. But we continue. Amen. And we prove to them that they're wrong. Amen. Praise God. Where are they now? They're gone. Gone with the wind. Why? We stand on our faith. We stand on the word of God. We stand on Jesus. Many people try to hurt us. Pag naglilingkod ka sa Panginoon, they are serving God. Satan will always try to find a way to distract you, to offend you, to stop you. Why? Because if you reach the level of maturity, you'll be dangerous to the enemy. Hindi, hindi ka na niya magagalaw. Mature ka na. Huh? When you reach the point of maturity. What's the point of maturity? Maturity is you are understanding you don't get offended. Amen? Amen? Amen. You Amen. encourage someone else. Ando ka na sa level of maturity. Matured ka na. Ang nanay mo ba naging offense sa'yo? <laughs> Hindi na kasi matured na sila. Diba? Yung mga grandparents. Sino grandparents dito? <laughs> eh, yeah, pa kayo. <laughs> Hindi na na-offend ang mga grandparents. <laughs> grandparents don't, don't get offended. Di ba? Sometimes your grandchildren are very naughty. It's fine. Why? Because they are mature. Amen. Naihian, nagpupuan ng bata. Okay lang. 
Ay, na-offend ako na hihihan ako ng apo ko. Ayaw ka na mag-alaga. Mas mag-alaga. Nothing. Why? Because they are matured. Matured people. So we don't get offended. So the valley of heart, okay? Let's go to Psalm 84, verse 5 to 7. It's normal, we will pass through all these valleys. Para hindi kayo magtaka, bakit ganito? Hello, napag-aralan na natin yan. Seven valleys. Amen? We will pass through all these valleys, mountains and hills and valleys and plains. We'll pass through all those when you travel. Of course, it's not always plain. May valleys, may mountains, may peaks sometimes. And we are the peak, praise God. Hallelujah! Dami tumanggap, sampu! Then siyang nagbackslide, oh, valley. <laughs> the valley of desperation. Right? Blessed are those whose strength is in you, O Lord, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. The Bible says, if we are hard, tayo po yung nasaktan, if our strength we consider is in the Lord, we will continue to be victorious. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of spring. So instead of being lonely in the valley, they rejoice in the valley. They make the valley, they, they produce springs in the valley. Springs are figure of speech. Springs signifies life and joy and happiness and satisfaction. Amen. When you are in a valley, be like a spring. Now, even though I'm in the valley, praise God. Hallelujah. I know this is normal. I will still continue to praise the Lord. I am happy and joyful. Even in the valley. Valley of hurt. Valley of sickness. Valley of lack sometimes. You need something. You don't have money. But praise God. When you praise the Lord. Money and opportunity will come. Amen. Instead of being lonely and depressed. Why? Because God is our provider. Amen. How do we get provisions? By praise. Amen. How do you get provision from heaven? By praise. When we praise God, rain comes down. Amen. Rain signifies blessing. Amen. When praise goes up, the blessing comes down. So when you need something in your life, you praise God Amen. in advance Amen. by faith. Amen. And the blessings will come down like rain. So they make the place like a place of springs and early rain also covers it with pools. So bumahat ng blessing. Rains and water covers the valley with pools. Naging parang pool siya. What happened after that? So from weakness, they go from strength to strength. When we are in the valley, we are weak. But when we start praising God, thanking God, remembering all the goodness of God, and then we praise God, the blessings will come down, the blessings will spring up, until you are flooded by blessings, and then you will be turned from strength to strength to strength to strength. You will be strengthened by your praise. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. And end result, you come to the church, you praise the Lord like you are in Zion. Why? Because na overpower mo, na overcome mo ang iyong Loneliness in the valley of hurt. You have overcome it. Now, offend ka, praise God, you forgive somebody, you forgive that person, and then you continue to rejoice in the Lord. Hindi tayo dapat na offend. Amen? Amen? Because people in the church, people in the office, people in your family can offend you. But be understanding. Kasi hindi naman totoo yung sinasabi niya sa'yo. Na-offend ka kasi totoo. Hello? But if it's not true, you shouldn't be offended. So, bakit ka ma-offend? 
Kung sinabi niya, sintonado ka. I'm not offended. I'll accept it. I moved to another ministry. <laughs> I'm not offended. I shouldn't be offended. Because I'm a, I'm a mature Christian. Ganun lang yun. Hindi tayo dapat ma-offend. Be light-hearted. Eh kung meron dapat ma-offend, if somebody should be offended, it's number one. Who's supposed to be offended? is Jesus. He was insulted, he was mocked, pinagbintangan, hindi naman rebellion siya, hindi naman siya nagre-rebel. They said he's inciting a rebellion. Who's inciting a rebellion? He's preaching the word of God, the word of goodness and righteousness. He's not inciting rebellion. Sinampal siya, sinuntok siya. And then he was crucified. He was sinless. He's not guilty. Pilate says, I could not find any sin against this man. I want to release him. But the religious leader says, Crucify! 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 He's inciting rebellion! So he was crucified. And the Bible says, Jesus says, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they are doing. Jesus even forgave the people who crucified him. He was not offended. Are we getting Amen. Jesus was not offended. He was sinless. He's not guilty of any, 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 any single little sin. He's not guilty. The Bible says he was sinless. But he was not offended. He forgave and he prayed for these people. Jesus was in the valley at that time. But he was able to overcome the valley of hurt. Amen, Paul. So there's no reason for us to be offended. Next valley is the valley of dryness. Spiritual dryness. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 2 to 5. Sometimes we are so really enthusiastic and then sometimes we will we are passing through the valley of dryness, spiritual dryness. Okay, let's read. And he led me around among them, and behold, okay, there were many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So Ezekiel was brought by the Lord in the valley of dry bones. But God gave him the instruction to prophesy over the bones and the bones live and became a great army. This is the valley of dryness. When you go on vacation, you're not reading your Bible, you're attending a church that has no power, you are spiritually drained, now you are experiencing the valley of dryness. You are so depleted spiritually, you are so dry spiritually. Then you come back to Riyadh, your spiritual mentor or leader calls you, the one answer the phone. Is it right or wrong? You don't want to answer the phone. You shut off the phone. You don't want to attend Bible studies. You, want, you don't want to attend the church. You don't want to attend the prayer meeting. Why? Because you are in the valley of dryness. In the valley of dryness. And then finally, they were able to drag you to the church. So we'll pump you again. until you are hallelujah <laughs> buhay na naman ako I'm alive again spiritually valley of dryness why do we experience dryness in our spiritual life it's your negligence you're not reading your bible while you are on vacation amen the spirit of laziness, the spirit of slumber comes on you. And you become lazy. Oh, I have no Bible to say, Pastor. 
there is Bible in the internet. Hello. Amen. You have laptop, everybody has laptop. You have iPhone, everybody has iPhone. You have internet, everybody is in the internet. So there is no reason for you not to read your Bible because there is Bible in the internet. So you won't suffer the spiritual dryness. You will notice it when you pray. There is no power. There is no anointing. Lord bless this food. The power. Why? You are drained. Spiritually drained. You have no anointing. Anointing comes from the Word of God. When you have no anointing, you read the Word of God. You listen to the Word of God. You read the Word of God. Listen to the Word of God and regain your anointing. Regain your power. So you will solve your problem, spiritual dryness. Because you are in the valley, valley of dryness. Amen? Wala kang revelation. Hindi ka makapag-share the Word of God. You cannot share the Word of God. The Holy Spirit says, says share the Word of God to your mother. Share the Word of God. You forgot your training. Remember your training. The reason why you are trained here is so that you will be able to share the Word of God to your families. And to whomever the Lord will bring into your life. So don't let yourself to stay in the valley of dryness. Like what Ezekiel saw, the valley of dry bones. All the bones were so dry. But when the word of God was given to those dry bones, the bones leave. Why? Because there's power in the Word of God. Amen. So your dry bones will have power again. You will live again spiritually. Come to the church right away. After vacation, come to the church right away. Don't stay in the valley of dryness. Amen? The valley of dry bones. The valley of dryness. So that you'll be productive. Useful for the Master. Useful for the master. Each and every one of us has a responsibility to avail ourselves sa purpose ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Dapat we're always ready. You are a soldier of God. Tell your neighbor you're a soldier of God. Be always ready. Praise God. We are soldiers of God. We always pray to share the word of God. Get out of the valley of dryness. Sometimes we encounter and we are in the valley of guilt. When you are in the valley of guilt, it will distract also your spiritual growth. What is the valley of guilt? Satan is trying to remind you your old sin. Your old sin. Oh, maybe the Lord is not answering your prayer because you sinned 10 years ago. You remember what you did here and there? You did here and there? You're not a good person actually. So Satan is trying to put guilt. If you have guilt in your heart, you can never be productive. Kasi naisip mo lagi guilty ka of something. Value of guilt. Go to Romans. 8, 1, and 2. Amen. If the devil tries to put guilt in your brain. We have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, since we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ? Amen. No more condemnation, no more guilty feelings. There should never be any guilty feelings for whatever sins you might have committed when you were high school, when you were elementary, you stole something, when you were 10 years old, 12 years old, and the devil is trying to remind you, you were high school, you are dating three people, so you're, you're guilty, hindi pa sinasabi sa husband mo or sa wife mo, hanggang ngayon. So the devil is giving you some guilt. Amen? Or, 
Meron kang nagawa last week. You did something last week. And you ask forgiveness already. But still you have this guilt. In your heart. You are feeling guilty. But don't feel guilty. God loves you. When we confess our sins, He is faithful and just forgive us our sins. And always remember this, Romans 8, 1 and 2. It's very, very important. You should never ever feel guilty of anything else. Lahat po ng kasalanan natin ay binayaran na at pinatawad na ng Panginoon. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the love of the Spirit of life has set you free Amen. in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death and guilt. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Lord grace has set us free from sin, worry, fear, and guilty feelings. Mm -hmm. Tayo po ay pinalayan sa lahat ng mga hindi magaganda na isip natin. Amen? Amen? Or, you always have this guilt kasi lagi kang may tinitingnan sa internet na hindi ka aya-aya. So, you'll have this guilty feeling. But you need to stop it Tell your neighbor, stop it. Stop it. You stop those. It's not for you. Amen? You're looking for something in the internet that is not pleasant, that is against the will of God, especially the singles. Who are singles here in the room? In the room? In the room? You have all the temptation. And it's also a habit. You need to break that habit. So Satan will not have any tool against you. But there should never ever be any guilty feelings anymore in your lives if you are living a right Christian life. Dapat tama ang pamumuhay natin. Amen? Para walang guilty feelings. Because it will destroy your spiritual career, your destiny. Hindi mo mararating ang destiny mo. Ano ba destiny mo? Hindi spiritual success sa iyong career. Nagigang pastor. Nagigang Bible study leader. Nagigang praise and worship leader. You become a counselor or whatever is your position in the church. You must aspire for a good position in the kingdom of God. Amen? Hindi yung palagi ka nilang soldier. There's nothing wrong with the soldier, but you need to be promoted to become captain, major, colonel, then later on, general. God's general. Alisin mo na yung sagabal sa buhay mo. If there's still something that's hindering your spiritual growth or your spiritual career, remove it completely. Para magamit ka ng Panginoon. Your pastor can say this, know this, that you are not 100% committed. Why? We have discerning power. We have the spirit of discernment. God has given the leaders, the pastors, the spirit of discernment. All of you, leaders, you have the spirit of discernment. You can discern if this person is hiding something. Eh, hindi siya magamit ng Panginoon. We must be a clean vessel so that the Lord can use you mightily for His glory. Amen. And you will see how you will be blessed. Amen. You will be happy, joyful, healthy, wealthy, productive. You will always be the head and at the tail. You will have your integrity. Many, many benefits God will give to you when you start that serving Him with all your heart. Amen. It's good to serve God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it's good to serve God. When you're not serving God, you know, you know what you are? You are a dry stick. You are a dry stick. When you're not serving God, you are a dry stick. What do we do on dry stick? Ha? Panggatong sa palayok. That's your value. Praise God. Next value, okay, we have two more left. 
The valley of decision. Let's go to Joel chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. The valley of decision. You cannot make a decision. Am I going to do this? Or no? Am I going to leave this? Or no? Am I going to give this away? Or no? Valley of decision. Joel. Put the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Go in. Tread for the wine press is full. The vats overflow for their evil is great. Next verse. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. There is a valley of decision. What's a valley of decision? This is a place where you are in the fork. Diba sa kalye may fork? Yung, am I going to the left or to the right? I'm on the fork road. So you have to make a decision. Some Christians don't make a decision. They're just there for a very long time. They don't make a decision. Am I going to serve God 100% or no? No decision. Aba, you may need to make a decision. If you're in the valley, all decision, you have to make a decision. Mag-decide ka. Para sa Panginoon ka ba? O hindi? There is a story in the Bible, it's written in 1 Kings 18.21. This is where Elijah asked the people to make a decision. 1 Kings 18.21. Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow Him. If Baal is God, then follow Him. And the people did not answer Him a word. They didn't make any decision. Some Christians are like this. They don't make any decision. Ay nila mag-decide na talaga maglilingkot na ako sa Panginoon. Really? I'm going to serve God. They don't make a decision. If you don't make a decision, nothing will happen. You will not move from your place. Because you don't make a decision. Decision is very important. Mag-decide ka. We made the decision. This is the reason why we are here. We made the decision to build a church. That's why we have a church. We made the decision to share the word of God, to sacrifice, to serve the Lord, to bring people into the kingdom of God. We made a decision. This is the reason why we are bringing people into the kingdom of God. It's very important to make a decision. Kailan ka ba magdi-decide? When will you decide to attend the training program? Or to serve God? God cannot use you if you are not trained. Have you seen a soldier that is not trained? Eh, police pa to, lalabas lang. Madalaki tiyan, ato sa ilalim ng tulay, naghahanap ng makukotong. Ah, ngayon, di ka na pwede. Nanalo si Duterte. Patay ka ngayon. You're dead. I'm a pusher. Dead. Uh, you see? Why? Wala na silang integrity. They have no more integrity, these policemen. Okay, the same the Christians. You don't make a decision. Hindi ka mag-grow kasi you're not trained. You need to be trained. Come on, guys. Train yourself para magamit ka ng Panginoon. Make a decision. Make a decision. You are in the valley of decision, but you need to make a decision. O may boyfriend ka. Aba, sampung taon na kayo mag-shota. Wala pa nangyayari. Ano ba, papakasalan mo ba ako? Oh, hindi. Matandang dalaga na ako. Hindi ka na pwedeng umatras. You don't want to make a decision? I will make a decision. I told my father also that you will marry me and he will kill you. Why, pinatanda mo ako. I'm 35 already. Shota type. I was 25. Hindi ka pa nagdi-decide hanggang iyo. You're not just making a decision. After now, I'm 35 already. I made a decision. And I told my father that you will marry me. Next week. 